Uh, attention engineering students, uh, this is going to be a quick lesson on how to read the dial caliper. We will use these a lot throughout the year, um, measuring and manufacturing some, some, some th things in our course. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, this is pretty precise. It's very precise, actually. We can measure to the thou ten thousandth of an inch. Accuracy depends on whether you're using it right, and that's what we want to go over, right? How do we use this, and how do we record as accurately and as precisely as possible? The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure when the calipers are closed and measuring nothing, that it's reading as close to zero as possible. So we need to zero it. And right now, you can see when these calipers are closed here, it's not reading zero. So that's really simple uh, to do. I'm just going to unscrew this one, just uh, loosen it. It's called the dial lock. And then just twist the bezel so that it lines up. So that's zero now. And tighten that up a little bit. Doesn't have to be super tight. Just tighten up to hold. And that's zero now. Every time I do that, I'm measuring from zero, not some offset. This uh, screw right here, this allows your uh, calipers to slide easily. Or if I tighten it down, they won't slide anymore. Let's say I want to fix a reading and take the calipers, move them around. I don't want them to move around or adjust while I am moving, so I would tighten that. So let's go ahead and do a measurement. So I'm going to loosen this so I can move it around. And I'm going to put in an old iPod. Some of you guys may not even recognize what this is, right? It's an iPod. Um, and I'm going to put it there and put it in there. And again, it's really kind of hard to make a measurement with the, the object, especially if it's not stuck in there. So what I want to do is I want to tw tighten this, the slide. Now my object can come out and I preserve that measurement. And that's what we're going to want to read in this case. So the first two digits we're going to get are actually going to come from the thing that looks the most like the ruler right here. This is different than most rulers because it's broken into tenths every inch instead of sixteenths or eighths or thirty seconds or whatever. So the first thing I'm going to get is I'm going to get uh, my inch mark. So this is, there's one inch, there's two inches. And then I haven't gone to the next line that would be 2.1. So the first thing I'm going to write then are my first two digits are going to be 2.0 because I'm not to 2.1 yet. The next thing I need to do is I need to read the dial to get the more precise information. Each one of these is 10. Um, you could think of this as a hundredth of an inch. So that's one hundredths, two hundredths, three hundredths. That's going to go in here. So this would be 2.01. This would be 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05. And that's where I'm going to put this. 0, 0.05. And then I'm going to figure out how far over it is here. So I count over, and it doesn't look like it's all the way to the 6, but it's past the 9. So I know it's 2.059, and here's where we make that estimate, right? How far between those little guys, those little lines, is it? To me, it's not all the way on the 660, but it's pretty close. So I would say it's 9. So I would record this, uh, the, the width of my iPhone is pretty close to two inches, right? It's 2.0599 inch. Anytime we use this, this instrument, we can get to the 10,000th. If I can get four decimal places from any measurement, I want four decimal places from every measurement. That's what this lesson and the practice for today is about.